Hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO. If you're a project manager and you've ever thought to yourself at the end of a project, if I'd known then what I know now, I'd have done things differently, then you'll appreciate that everything seems clearer and easier with hindsight. But generating your own hindsight is hard and often painful. George Bernard Shaw said, if history repeats itself and the unexpected always happens, how incapable man must be of learning from experience. I think project managers can learn a lot from each other's experience and especially from sharing their scars. Sharing experiences gives you access to somebody else's hindsight without all the hard work and the pain. So as part of my campaign for real project managers, on your behalf I'm talking to some real project managers I've had the pleasure of working alongside so that you can benefit from their experience. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Juliette Doswell who's going to share some of her experiences with us. Juliet, I'd like you to start, please, by giving us an overview of your background and how you got into project management. So I started in project management about 20 years ago. Um, I was working for Sport England in London and uh, I got involved on a project to introduce a database. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a business representative on the project and I really enjoyed working on the project and I started learning prints and got really got into the project and became more and more the key business rep on the project and then eventually started being the project manager on those type of projects. And what sort of thing do you do now in the world of project management? So I currently work as a portfolio office manager with a team of four working in a healthcare insurance company. Mm -hmm. So thinking back over your career can you give me an example of a scar so something that went wrong on a project that you were managing? Yes, a um, long time ago in the, the noughties I worked for Children's Social Services and um, the project was to set up a children's centre, a place where families and children could go and get advice and support. Um, we started the project off um, uh, on the basis of the school not having uh, used part of their um, building for a period of time. Uh, and they offered that building to us so that we could use it as a uh, children's centre. Mm -hmm. So we started the project thinking it was going to be a refurbishment project. Got uh, a contract uh, consultancy in who were specialists in construction, purchased a uh, feasibility study to find out how we might go about it, not having any experience of construction projects at all. And then the feasibility study came back and said, yep, great, go ahead, it's going to cost you about this amount of money. So I uh, went away, managed to get the funding, started the project off, everything seemed to be going really well, started work, and then all of a sudden everything stopped. They found asbestos. Ah. Work went on hold, nothing happening. Had to commission a second feasibility study, this right. time spent a bit more money on it and it came back saying that it was no longer feasible to do a refurbishment project it was no no longer value for money right so you had a second feasibility study done in the knowledge that there was asbestos in yep. the building now okay not not possible to refurbish right much much cheaper to actually demolish the building oh wow <laughs> and put something else in okay so the project changed completely um, and we went through the options of rebuild uh, and the only affordable option for us was a modular build. So the project changed completely from being a refurbishment project to a complete demolish and rebuild situation. Obviously a lot more expensive than we set out. Okay, and did the project carry on to completion? So everything started progressing really well after that. We okay. cleared the site. We laid the foundations, we designed everything, uh, the modules came in, they were connected together, the furniture arrived, and then we had to uh, have a building regulations inspection and a disability um, discrimination act inspection. Right. Uh, the building regulations went fine, uh, disability uh, discrimination act, uh, no. Right. We failed. Okay. Last, problem? last minute changes, things that we didn't design in, despite having had advice on how to do it. Oh, right. Um, and so some very last minute changes and additional cost. All right, so did the project com complete though? Did it, it did, it did. It was successful. 
Um, it actually did come in within budget, not the first budget, but the second <laughs> budget. <laughs> so reflecting on that experience then, um, what advice would you give to other people if they find themselves in a situation like that or to avoid getting themselves into a situation like that? So what I learnt was that a feasibility study doesn't ensure that you're not going to come up with something that you weren't expecting. Um, projects are always more complex than you ever think they're going to be at the beginning. You only learn what you need to do once you start doing the work. So my advice is to never go into a project thinking that it's going to be what you started thinking it was going to be and set your sponsors expectations so that they know that there could be some changes and that any estimations that you've got are just estimations at the early stage. Just make sure that there's some um, contingency in there for things changing over time. Anything else? So the second lesson is that regulation isn't black and white, it's just someone's viewpoint and although you may have asked for advice, you may not have got exactly the right advice or it may be someone's viewpoint and the person who's inspecting may have a different viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think my learning from that is to seek advice from more than one person. The more advice you have, the better your position you're in to uh, work out what's the right advice mm -hmm. and which advice you should follow. Juliet, thanks for your time, your openness and your insights. So today we've heard from Juliet about how she recovered from something that went wrong on a project and what she learned from it. Mark Twain said, history doesn't repeat itself, but sometimes it rhymes. To me, that means that although the future is never exactly like the past, it's often similar enough for the lessons of the past to be useful. So my challenge to you is what will you learn from this? What will you do differently on your project as a result of Juliet's experience? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a comment or a like or both or sharing it with others on social media. If enough people think these videos are worthwhile, then I'll make more of them. If you want to share your scars in one, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website pragmaticpmo.com or follow me on Twitter at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for watching.